So I came across this teaching, and I'm not sure uh, exactly from where it is. I do believe it is a Christian teaching, though. And so we'll sort of break it down from our angle, our viewpoint. So the teaching, I'm going to read it out, and then we'll break it down. It says, demonstrate your trust in me by sitting quietly in my presence. So you can see it's it's from the point of view, point of view of reality, of truth, of self. Demonstrate your trust in me by sitting quietly in my presence. Put aside all that is waiting to be done and refuse to worry about anything. This sacred time together strengthens you and prepares you to face whatever the day will bring. By waiting with me, before you begin the day's activities, you proclaim the reality of my living presence. This act of faith, waiting before working, is noted in the spirit world, where your demonstration of trust weakens principalities and powers of darkness. The most effective way to resist evil is to draw near me. When you need to take action, I will guide you clearly through my spirit and my word. The world is so complex and overstimulating that you can easily lose your sense of direction. Doing countless unnecessary activities will only dissipate your energy. When you spend time with me, I restore your sense of direction. And as you look to me for guidance, I enable you to do less, but accomplish more. So beautiful two paragraphs. Written from, you can say, the point of view of truth, of reality, being spoken at the personal self, you know, directed towards the personal self. So see, when it says, so in the beginning, demonstrate your trust in me by sitting quietly in my presence. So here you see there's still duality, right? Two, like me and reality, me and self, something that I have to sit with. But notice how when we begin this inward process, right? So it says, put aside all that is waiting to be done and refuse to worry about anything, right? And sit quietly in my presence. So when we actually begin this inward leap, where does your presence begin or end? And where does the presence of truth, of reality begin and end? You see, where's the boundary? So you see, do, this, this separation between you and yourself, you and truth, you and life, can only exist if we are sort of outward turned and talking and, and always just entangled in concepts and just going our day-to-day, uh, -day, you know, personal life. But that is the journey inward. In the journey inward, this boundary between you and that which is real is seen to be non-existent. The boundary between your presence and the presence of truth, the presence of self, is seen to be non-existent non-existent it is the same that it that is the 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 clarity which arises in silence the sacred time together strengthens you and prepares you to face whatever the day will bring by waiting with me before you begin the day's activities you proclaim the reality of my living presence So rather than just being immersed in what you're doing or immersed in the personal self and the world of the personal self, the moment you wake up, right? And then the moment you wake up, notice how automatically uh, what appears is now taken to be real. What appears is the ultimate truth. So rather than just immersion in that which appears, sitting quietly 
in the presence of truth, proclaiming its reality. That which is beyond appearance. This act of faith, waiting before working, is noted in the spirit world, where your demonstration of trust weakens the principalities of and, and powers of darkness. And that is just a fancy way of saying purification of the mind. You know, when we talk about sit and be as you are, be quiet, focus on I am. In this lapse of objective focus, in this going inward, in this marinating in the presence of truth, the presence of self, the, the many structures of egoic identity, personal self, incorrect notions, false belief systems are becoming weaker, right? So in this one, it says, uh, your dem this demonstration of trust of, of rights sitting with yourself weakens the principalities and powers of darkness. That we can just say that, that that's a purification of mind. In silence, these notions and these tendencies and these concepts and these belief systems, they are weakened, they are dissipated. The, the clouds of confusion and fear and worry and anxiety and personal doership are, are thinning away. The most effective way to resist evil is to draw near me. When you need to take action, I will guide you clearly. So rather than identifying with thinking, rather than trying to resist, rather than trying to manipulate, rather than trying to fight back, find shelter in the presence of truth. I will guide you clearly when you need to take action. The world is so complex and overstimulating that you can easily lose your sense of direction. And so you see, that's what we say oftentimes that when you like, let's say, stop practicing or when we become too in, uh, interested in just our, our daily stuff, right? Like our, what we want, what we don't want, who we take ourselves to be, the world, whatever. When our spiritual practice is on, in the back, you know, neglected, and we're again just caught up in the world, then we become deeply entangled and we lose our sense of self. Fear starts to brew up once more maybe some conflict starts to arise again. In, in Indian terminology, the, the Rajsik and the Tamsik energies, they, they once again start to control your existence. And harmony, the Sattva quality, it, it starts to be complacent, uh, dormant. Whereas marinating in the presence of truth, in your presence, matures the, that Sattvic element that quality and the the energies of restlessness and destruction are are sort of balanced out are dissipated and that is what we experience as having clarity when we need to act having a sense of direction Doing countless unnecessary activities will dissipate your energy. When you spend time with me, I restore your sense of direction. As you look to me for guidance, I enable you to do less but accomplish more. And that's often the simplicity factor that we talk about that naturally arises in your quality of life, in your quality of experience as we uh, go deeper in this spiritual practice, as we begin to uh, meditate consistently, as we begin to practice inquiry, we see that the conflicting nature of life that previously used to persist 
even maybe it's here to some degree, but it's no longer of the same um, nature. It, it, it doesn't have such a capacity to pull you in. And in, in just general, it's, it, it's not really as conflicting. It's not really as like your experience has less fear. It has less anxiousness. It has less restlessness. As you look to me for guidance, I enable you to do less but accomplish more. So in living in the simplicity, we are able to carry out our functions with much greater efficiency. We are able to live our personal expression without right, fear of the future, without fear of failure, without the desire for approval, without attachment to result without self comparison or I mean comparison with others you see so all of these things which are you can say the the what was described here as the powers of darkness these these things that I just listed they are the the energies which become dissipated balanced out in the presence of truth And again, in the beginning, it begins as me and awareness somewhere over there, or me and self somewhere over there that I have to find, that I have to realize, or something like that. There's a big distinction, a big separation between me and that truth that I as a person am trying to find. But as we marinate in this presence, we see that the the seeming boundary between what I take myself to be and what I really am is non-existent. There is no boundary. So this is why we must value silence more than we value words. We must value the unknowable more than we value that which can be known. We must place our sense of truth, of reality, not in mere appearances, not in mere thoughts, emotions, circumstances, body, mind, but rather an inner truth which we can't seem to understand intellectually. But we must just be open to the possibility that there is no separation between me and that truth. Open to the possibility that that is the source of myself, this whole thing. So spiritual practice has immediate fruit, which is the flowering of your life in this way, and the dissipation of suffering. But it also has uh, a, a deeper fruit, which is self-discovery, freedom from personal identity. Life becoming simpler, less suffering doesn't mean that suffering won't happen doesn't mean that fear won't arise doesn't mean anger won't arise doesn't mean no conflict will arise doesn't mean people will, won't do you any injustice doesn't mean unfavorable circumstances won't come up but it does mean that they won't have the capacity to knock you off your feet to pull you back into entanglement, into helplessness, into hopelessness. When that hopelessness does arise, or helplessness, or fear, or anxiety, 
you know where to turn. Don't run about frantically doing all these things. Don't run about in your mind fighting thoughts with thoughts. You know where to turn. This presence of, of truth, of, of yourself, your presence, is always there. Look at it as like that safe haven that you can always turn to. This alone, alone is enough to right all the wrongs, dissolve all the suffering, melt all the fear, And again, it is the seed of self-discovery of what I am beyond just what I appear to be. I just want to thank you for watching this video. I hope that it was very helpful for you. What I will do is I will link some other videos in the end screen of this video. So by the end, you'll see them come up on the screen that I believe you should watch and that would be helpful to you. I'll also link down below in the description box some free resources I have from some free classes and meditations that I think you would also find beneficial. Now lastly, if you want my personal help to help you dissolve mind identification and become free from emotional suffering within 60 days, please learn more about my School of Awakening. I'll also link that down below. Uh, I, I believe it will be absolutely transformational for you. So if that's of interest, all the links are down below. Again, that's all from me for today. I hope this video was helpful. I will see you next time.